Recording in progress. You wouldn't. Ready? Good evening. Welcome to the City of Sugarland City Council meeting for Tuesday, August the 16th. A little bit about the agenda tonight. It's going to go pretty quick. We're going to have the invocation followed by the pledge to the nation's flag, and then we'll get to the business of the city. Nashad, invocation and the pledge. <clears throat> Please join me as I pray. Dear God, as we gather here today, let me start by thanking you. Thank you for all your many and abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of good health, and for friendship. As we begin our fall school year for our youngsters, please watch over our students, teachers, administrators, and everyone involved in educating our children. God, we also ask that you keep all of our men and women in the armed forces, our first responders, and healthcare heroes safe. We also ask that you keep those affected by the recent floods in Kentucky close to you, as we know you have a plan for all of those who are affected. Also keep those helping them on the ground safe from injury as they work to restore normalcy in their lives. Please guide us and our staff as we make decisions to elevate our city to an even higher status. We ask that you continue to guide us along the right path and keep us under your protection and grace. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thomas, we're going to move to item number two, public hearing, public comment. Anybody signed up? No, sir. We have no pre-signups. Anybody from the audience that would like to talk on one of the agenda items that's not listed as a public hearing? Move on to item number three, consent agenda. All the items in the consent agenda will be taken in one motion unless the council member pulls an item, at which time we'll take that in a separate motion. Do we have a motion? So moved. We've got a motion by Jacobson, second by Kermali. Vote at this time, please. And it passes 7-0. Thank you, council members. Item number four, public hearings, 4A, public hearing. Receiving here all persons desiring to be heard on the proposed 2022 assessment for properties located in the enclave, enclave at River Park Public Improvement District. We have Scott Butler, our Director of Budget and Strategy. Scott. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This evening, um, we have the uh, assessment for the Enclave at River um, PID or Public Improvement District. For background, this uh, district was formed by Council Resolution back in 2014. Uh, it's a relatively small area, approximately 54.5 acres. It includes 139 platted lots. And it was formed as a PID because um, the PID is a more efficient process than, than the mud, and it's less costly. <laughs> Some additional background. It was created to reverse the, uh, reimburse the developer for public um, infrastructure improvements. The assessment is not for new amenities or new infrastructure. The assessment is significantly less than in-city MUDs um, <clears throat> and other taxes that are paid by residents in other areas of the city. Buyers within the PID 
are required by law to be notified of the PID's existence and the assessment as part of the closing process. So some background, <clears throat> specifically this is for reimbursement to the developer of just over $2 million of public infrastructure to serve the development. The developer met the obligations in January of 2019 and there was sufficient um, fund balance created to be able to issue the reimbursement to the developer. The infrastructure is not covered by city property taxes and it is not the response, it was not the responsibility of the city to construct um, the improvements initially. And, but the infrastructure has been conveyed to the city for maintenance purposes. And, and then annual assessments um, to the properties um, are, are used to pay the debt service over 15 years. And then once that um, obligation is met, then the assessment will cease. The, two, the 2022 proposed assessment is $430 per lot. This represents a decrease from the 2021 assessment of $30, and it is billed by the county as part of the uh, total assessment for the lot. This chart just shows you a brief history um, in terms of the planned, not only the payments to date, but the planned reduction over time until the obligation is satisfied. You can see where the uh, assessment started in 2015 compared to where they are now. <clears throat> this is to provide you a comparison of when we talk about the efficiency of the PID versus the assessment for the MUD. So the, the county assessment is the same, the school assessment is the same, the city's portion in terms of property taxes is the same. It's that last portion in the green that shows what the pit assessment is at the bottom uh, versus um, a couple of muds that are in within the area there. And so this represents a, bar a, a bargain, if you will, um, in terms of the less administrative costs um, to administer the pit. Notice was sent to property owners back on August 3rd. Um, it includes the notice of public hearing. Um, and then a letter was also mailed to explain to the property owners and remind them of the purpose of the PID. So the next steps is the public hearing uh, tonight on the proposed assessment for 2022, followed by the first reading of the assessment ordinance on September 6th, and then the second reading on September 20th. So this time we recommend a public hearing and then council, council if there's any questions. Yeah, council, I think we'll, we'll have the public hearing first. And then if there are questions, it's not an action item tonight so we'll hear if you have any questions we'll get those answered and then we'll take it up uh, at our next meeting or on the meetings that Scott said at this time we're going to open the public hearing for anybody desiring to to be heard in this particular agenda item and we have no advanced signups mayor and nobody signed up okay second call this time we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing Council members, any questions? Everybody clear? Thank you, Scott. Yes, sir. We're going to move on to item number five, tax record vote. 5A, consideration of an action on setting the City of Sugarland proposed 2022 tax rate, setting a public hearing and directing staff to publish the notice of proposed 2022 tax rate. Uh, Ms. Jennifer Brown, our Director of Finance. Jennifer. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. I have to move that microphone down very often. Um, we're here this evening to um, discuss a proposed tax rate for the 2022 tax year. Um, I have provided some updated <coughs> information um, since our workshop on Thursday. Um, one of the items that you all had asked was, could we get the breakdown of our comparative cities between their operations and maintenance tax rates and their debt service tax rates? So I have taken the cities that <clears throat> we presented on Friday, which were in the TML tax and debt survey, and I went um, and added a few serve, few cities that didn't normally would respond to the survey but didn't this year um, and have just put those out here for comparison purposes. Um, you can see ours is in the orange and blue, the third one from the right. Um, we are the second lowest out of all of these cities. The only one in total that is lower than us is Tyler, but as you can see, they do not have a debt service tax rate. So they're, um, it's roughly 27 cents um, tax rate is they don't all the operations and maintenance. We Right. They do not issue debt for their infrastructure. Um, and so that is the only reason that they are lower than us. But out of all these cities, um, we by far have, um, you know, the lowest M&O rate of anyone. Um, and, uh, you know, debt rate is 
comparable, but you can see a lot of these cities have significantly higher tax rates than we do. So I wanted to follow back up with you on that information. Um, historically, we have lowered our tax rate to manage our tax bills to residents. Um, since 1993, we have lowered our tax rate from 50 cents to the 34.65 that it is today. Um, this includes the implementation of um, a half cent voter approved uh, sales tax for property tax reduction that was implemented in 1993 and 1995. During that time, we had a ton of sales tax growth and so we were able to continually lower our tax rate and that worked well for us until the mid 2000s and um, we started seeing some slowdown in our sales tax growth. Um, and we hit 30 cents in our tax rate and there just comes a point where you can't lower that tax rate much more. Um, and so th at that point, we started using the homestead exemption to manage the impact to our residents' uh, tax bills. We raised the homestead exemption from 1% to 5%. And since then, we've raised it four more times, um, including this year, and it is now 13%. And our tax rate is 34.65. So we have... have maintained that low tax rate comparable to our uh, peer cities um, and then offset that with the homestead exemption to manage that tax bill impact. So the truth in taxation um, roles and responsibilities are set under the tax code. Um, there are three different entities that um, are really uh, res have responsibilities in this process. The Fort Bend Central Appraisal District um, is responsible uh, for appraising and certifying the property values within Fort Bend County. Um, we contract with Fort Bend County Tax Assessor Collector. They are our designated uh, tax assessor. They prepare and certify a truth and taxation calculation based on the information that uh, we provide and the information that they receive from the appraisal district. And then U.S. City Council are responsible for setting the tax rate necessary to support the adopted budget within the confines of the no new revenue and voter approval tax rate calculations. So the truth in taxation uh, process was revised beginning in uh, the tax year 2020 under the Senate Bill 2 that was passed by the 86th legislature in 2019. Uh, this bill impacted the terminology, calculations, deadlines, and processes um, that we must follow in setting the local property tax rates. Um, I have defined here what the no new revenue and the voter approval rate uh, means. Essentially, the no new revenue rate um, is the rate that generates the same revenue as we generated in the prior um, tax year, um, excluding um, adjustments for new value, settled lawsuits, and pending litigation. It does not account for um, our contributions to TERS or the net revenue that we keep after uh, our in-city mud rebates, where we rebate 50% of the taxes that we collect from our six in-city MUDs back to those districts to then in turn help them lower their tax rates. None of that is, that part is not included. Um, the voter approval rate then allows for a 3.5% increase in the maintenance and operations component of the tax rate over the no new revenue tax rate. So within that, um, if we don't adopt the full 3.5% every year, um, then we can accrue um, what is called the unused increment, um, and we can carry that over for three years. And so essentially, um, we have not adopted the full 3.5% for the last two years, and so our voter approval rate is actually slightly higher than the 3.5% um, that is allowed. Um, if, for some reason, City Council were to adopt a tax rate that exceeded the voter approval rate, we would be required to um, call an election in November um, to have the voters ratify that. Uh, we are not recommending doing that, um, but the only exception to that rule is in the case of a disaster declaration, um, and in that case, you would have a voter approval rate of 8%. Um, however, uh, the 2021 legislation makes it very difficult to enact that because then the following year you would have to decrease your 3.5% uh, your by that amount. So um, overview of the, a quick overview of the certified tax roll. Um, our net residential um, is at $12.5 billion. It is um, a $1.25 billion increase compared to last tax year, 11%. Commercial is at 6.228 billion, is a 938 million um, increase or 17.73%. 
and our overall net taxable value before the TERS um, are taken into account is uh, $18.792 billion, um, and that is a 13.13% increase. The value within our three TERS increased almost 30% this year, um, went from $486 million to $630 million. So when you back that out, because we don't keep that increment, the net taxable value to the city is $18.16 billion. It is a 12.63% increase, um, a little over $2 billion in value. So this is, we had uh, some corrections. Um, if you'll recall on Thursday, I had told you that we were uh, asking the CAD for some additional information on the new value to the tax roll. Um, we had previously shown a value of 165 million on the commercial side um, in new value, excluding uh, the personal property. Um, we did have them research and they determined that there was about 125 million of property that was inc included in that report in error. Um, so this is the corrected um, values. And so I have some new calculations to share with you. Um, so overall, our new commercial value was 82.1 um, million. That includes the expire, expiration of uh, one abatement. So we have roughly 60 million in new value on the commercial side, which makes a little bit more sense um, than the figure that was presented previously. So overall, we have 117.8 million in new value. Revaluation then is 2.2 billion. And uh, you can see uh, the split between residential and commercial. Um, the overall increase, 1.218 um, billion in residential and 826 uh, million in, uh, in commercial. Overall increase, 2.036 uh, billion, million. Sorry, millions and billions. They just run together after a while. Um, so then historically, um, this chart uh, looks a little bit more in context now with those revised new value figures um, as it brings the 2022 values down to a better scale. So it, it looks more it, relative to what we've seen historically. Um, so those are the corrected, um, the corrected figures. And then um, what that does to the calculations is um, our no new revenue tax rate is now uh, 0.318287. And our voter approval rate um, is 0.359778. Our recommendation is still the same. We're recommending um, that we shift um, 0 0.00879 from the maintenance and operations component to the debt component and maintain the flat tax rate of 0.3465. The overall impact to our residential tax bills, um, the average home value um, citywide, this is going to include those with and without a homestead. So um, it could also include um, some values that homes that are not owner occupied um, went from 384,000 to just under 422,000. It is uh, roughly a 9.8% increase. Um, increasing the homestead exemption from 12 to 13% uh, made that the value of that homestead increase to almost $55,000 on that average home. Mm -hmm. And then the taxable value is now $367,123 um, compared to $338,229. Um, the tax bill impact, um, it goes up uh, right at $100. It's like $100.12. Um, and that, uh, so it buys down that increase from 9.79% to 8.54%. Obviously, this is going to change based on everyone's individual situation, but this is based on the citywide average. So um, in 2019, if you'll recall, we had our voter approved GO bonds. And uh, previously we had showed that we would be needing a one cent increase to the tax rate um, in 2022 out of the three cent total. And this was really assuming no increase in value on the debt service side. Um, we were very conservative in um, uh, evaluating the impact of the GO bonds um, on the debt service fund. Um, the growth that we've experienced in the assessed value uh, is allowing us to shift the 0 .0879, um, 0.0879 from O&M to debt um, and avoid that one cent tax increase. Um, we are counting that, that component toward the total of the three cents in our own internal calculations um, because we wanna be true to you know, the, the, the impact of it. Um, and that additional value is also um, allowing us to accelerate the final drainage and street project, which would be Sugar Creek uh, drainage improvements on Montclair and the street improvements along Country Club Boulevard from Sugar Creek to Chesterfield. 
uh, the maintenance and operations uh, component of the additional revenue, we're recommending setting that aside in the general fund to uh, allow us uh, some capacity for additional inflationary increases that may occur. So uh, the record, the, the actions tonight, um, this is uh, just a record vote on uh, the tax rate. Um, so I would like to have uh, recorded into the minutes that we have received an updated calculation from the uh, Fort Bend uh, property tax office, tax assessor collector of the updated no new revenue tax rate and voter approval tax rate calculations. Um, and we'll take a record vote um, to consider the proposed tax rate for 2022. This is not an, um, an action to adopt the tax rate. Um, this is just uh, saying this is the tax rate that you all would like to consider. Um, and we're setting a uh, time and place for the public hearing, which would be on September 13th of this year, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. here at City Hall. And um, after the vote, we will uh, publish the notice of the proposed tax rate in the newspaper and um, hold the public hearing. And then the tax rate would be considered on uh, September 20th at 5.30 after the budget is adopted for fiscal year 23. With that, I would be happy to take any questions. Any questions? I'll make a motion to receive into the record the revised uh, tax roll, assessed value tax roll, and set the dates as as you presented. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. Um, for those of uh, our citizens that may tune in tonight and watch this in the days to come. I don't think most of our citizens know that the reason there's not a lot of questions right now is because every Thursday morning we've been reviewing this. Uh, this is not something that any of us take lightly. This is very important to all of us. And I think you guys have done a fabulous job. Keep it up. Thank you. Got a motion. I've got a second. I believe it was was it Watley? Ms. Carroll, Ms. McCutcheon has a second. Any other comments? You vote at this time, please. And it passes seven zero. Thank you, Council Members. Item number six: ordinances and resolutions. Six A. First and final consideration: consideration of an action on City of Sugarland Ordinance Number Twenty Two Seventy Six. An ordinance authorizing the issuance of City of Sugarland, Texas, Combination Tax and Revenue Certificates of Obligation, Taxable Series 2022. Ms. Jennifer Brown. Jennifer. Thank you, Mayor. All right, so we are here this evening um, for the uh, issuance of taxable COs. Um, I'd like to give a little background um, behind the project and why we're issuing the Certificates of Obligation. Um, and so uh, we do issue uh, debt for our capital projects to um, we to fund capital improvements where we can't prudently pay cash for those. Um, the issuance of debt allows us to spread the cost of the improvements over the useful life so that today's residents are not responsible for the full cost of the projects that will benefit future generations. Um, this also allows us to allocate our available resources to the high priority projects um, and get multiple projects done at one time. Uh, we are actively seeking out low-cost loans and grant opportunities, and this is one of those, as well as participating in interlocal funding agreements, which we talked about during uh, Thursday's uh, budget workshop, and we talked about all our partnerships with Fort Bend County and the mobility bonds. Um, and so we are actively seeking out uh, joint participation in those types of things. So uh, for this loan, in 2021, staff applied for a loan from the Texas Water Development Board um, for the Oyster Creek Diversion Channel. This uh, channel is uh, would be improvements in track, the former uh, central prison unit known as Track 2. Um, there's property there that is within the 100-year floodplain. Um, this will get that property, including some other existing city property um, and our airport um, portions of that, um, out of the floodplain and allow development to occur. Um, it's a great program. It's the Flood Infrastructure Fund. Um, it is a 0% interest, 30-year uh, repayment. Uh, the principal amount on this particular issue is $27.5 It will cover design, construction, and issuance costs for 
this uh, particular issue. And um, over the life of the loan, we're saving about $14 million in interest costs compared to market rates. The Water Development Board approved our application on June 9th, and uh, we have included this project in the fiscal year 23 CIP for appropriation. Um, why are we issuing CEOs instead of GO bonds? Well, we did not include this project in the 2019 GO bonds. Um, where we had a lot of other real high priority uh, protecting uh, structures from flooding. Um, those were the highest priority projects, 47.6 million or so that were included in the bond election. Um, this was not on our, on our radar at that point, um, but we do have in our uh, financial management policy statements where we have the ability to issue certificates of obligation um, when we are leveraging funding from other sources or being advantageous of low cost loans. Um, and so uh, when the Water Development Board approved this in June, um, we uh, triggered us, that we had to start the process to issue these CEOs. Um, and so in order to meet their deadlines to close on time, we obviously don't have time to wait for the next geo bond election to have this project approved. So uh, we brought to you um, a notice of intent to issue certificates of obligation. I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, and so we've completed that publication uh, timeline and um, we're ready to have you approve the issuance. We are doing these, uh, this issue as a taxable issue and that helps us to avoid any arbitrage issues um, due to the zero interest cost of the loan um, and the fact that we will be escrowing these funds in an, in an escrow account, which will be earning interest during the construction period. So um, not having to pay arbitrage um, allows us to retain that interest income. And there are our development uh, components that uh, I'll talk about in just a moment that we uh, also need to take into consideration. Following back up on a previous question, when we had the notice of intent, uh, Mr. Kamali, you asked about uh, changing the tax status of the 16.5 million that we did for Chimney Stone. We are currently working on an amendment um, with the Texas Water Development Board to see if uh, we can uh, get that changed. And so I will follow back up with you when we have more information, but we are actively pursuing that. So the project is going to serve the entire Track 2 development, which includes both city property and non-city property. Um, Jim Calloway is uh, working hard on agreements um, that will ensure that the developer pays their share of the project. Um, it is advantageous to the city to secure this low cost funding for the project to facilitate the addition of this value to our tax roll. And then any future development agreements will define the developer's responsibility. Um, they've already, I think they've already figured out the percentage of their share. Um, so since this is not a tax exempt bond issue, there aren't any kind of concerns with private activity use or anything like that. So it worked out that we decided to go ahead and do the taxable issue for this. So as I mentioned, we did the required legal notice um, published. Um, we came to you um, June 21st and you did approve the resolution to publish that. Um, it was published in the newspaper twice and has been on our website continuously um, since that time. And um, that notice included this information. I won't read all of this. Um, this is all set by state law. So there's a lot of information that gets put in, in that notice. So this evening we are here um, to ask you to approve ordinance number 2276, which will approve the city's participation in the flood infrastructure loan program for 27.5 million through the issuance of taxable certificates of obligations. Um, the bonds will be repaid over 30 years. Um, we will have, uh, you have to get the signed ordinance to the Water Development Board by Friday um, the 19th. And we have scheduled closing with the Water Development Board for September 13th. And then those funds would be deposited into our escrow account. I do apologize for the font I messed up and made it too big. Um, with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. I have uh, Joe Morrow, our financial advisor from Hilltop, and Justin Hicks is here from Andrews Kurth um, to back me up. Any questions from the council members? Do we have a motion to approve? I do. Got a motion by Jacobson. Do I have a second? Second by Lane. You vote at this time, please. And it passes seven to zero. Thank you, Jennifer. Item number 6B, consideration of an action on City of Sugarland Resolution number 2235, a resolution of City Council of the City of Sugarland, Texas, 
authorizing the submission of a loan application for funding through the Texas Water Development Board, flood infrastructure fund, and designate the city manager or his designee as authorized official to apply for, accept, reject, alter, or terminate the loan and to execute all loan documents. We have with us Jorge Alba, our senior engineering manager. Jorge. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Let me start with some background of the Flood Infrastructure Fund. So the 86 Texas legislature has entrusted the Texas Water Development Board with the funding of flood mitigation projects in the state of Texas. And then on November 5th, 2019, Texas voters approved Proposition 8, providing for the creation of the Flood Infrastructure Fund that we also call FIF to assist in the financing uh, of drainage, flood mitigation, and flood control projects in the state. The FIF programs provides financial assistance in the form of uh, loans or grants for planning and design activities required to obtain regulatory approvals, <clears throat> excuse me, and also for the design and construction of flood protection projects. So in June 2020, city staff submitted three pre-applications to the Texas Water Development Board for the Covington West and Imperial Woods Drainage Improvements Project, also for the Oyster Creek Diversion Channel and Detention Facilities, and the Austin Park and Chimney Stone Drainage Improvements. In previous years, we were approved for a loan, as Jennifer explained a few minutes ago, for the Oyster Creek Diversion, Diversion and Detention Channel for $27.5 million. And we also got approval for a 0% 30-year loan for the Austin Park Chimney Stone Drainage Improvement for $16.5 million. So earlier this year, in June of this year, we received an invitation from the Texas Water Development Board to submit a full application for the Covington West and Imperial Woods for a 0% interest 30-year loan in the amount of $3 million. That was the amount that we applied back in 2020. However, we are currently on the design of that project, and uh, we have completed 30% design, and the most current estimate for construction cost is $4 million. So after talking with the Texas Water Development Board, they authorized us to submit a full application for $4.1 million, including $100,000 of the estimated closing costs on this project. So this is the project location, basically the neighborhood of Covington West to the west and Imperial Woods to the east, and they will include a storm sewer and a street replacement payment replacement along um, Linwood Lane, right here at the outfall into the Covington Woods drainage channel. So Linwood, Oakwood Lane, Mason Road, a portion of Greenway, and Arcadia Drive, all the way to Michelle Drive. So that is basically the area of the project. So the purpose of the project is to increase the stormwater conveyance and the decrease ponding depth and duration. The funding depth in this area is in excess of our performance-based criteria, and funding duration exceeds 10 hours at times. So two previously completed projects that we had in these areas will allow us to perform this project. Those were the, let me just make sure that I pointed them correctly. The, those are the detention pond uh, in the business park area and the improvements to channel A22 in this area. So the schedule right now, and I mentioned that we are already under design, we have completed 30% design of this project, is to complete design of the project in January 2023. We estimate that we probably will be closing on this loan also in January 2023. So the idea is to start construction or going to bid in February of next year. Construction is expected to be completed early in 2024. I need to point it that this project was authorized by city council to move from FY20 for construction from FY24 to FY23. So we'll be able to complete this project one year ahead. So the funding strategy that we have been working very in close hand with our Jennifer and the financial department, basically we have a $3 million included in the 2019 GeoBomb. Uh, we are applying for $4.1 million for construction. So we will have to issue one and a $1.1 million in COs to cover the cost increase. But also we, we can use savings from other drainage projects. And I want to mention that the financial office have determined that uh, we will at a 4% interest rate, we probably will save $2.8 million in the 30% uh, in the 30 years of the loan. So with this, 
city staff request city council to approve resolution number 2235 authorizing the submission of a loan application for funding through the Texas Water Development Board Fund infrastructure, uh, Flood Infrastructure Fund and designates the city manager or his designee as authorized official to apply for the loan and execute all loan documents as may be required by the Texas Water Development Board. So I'd be happy to respond to any question from city sure. council. Thank you, Mayor. Jorge, I just want to make sure I understand, please. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got, we're going to issue $3 million of GO bonds, and then we're going to issue $1.1 $1 .1 million of CO bonds, and then hopefully we'll get the uh, the 0% loan, mm -hmm. and then will we refund the CO bonds, or what do we do with the GOs and the COs, or do we well, just apply that money to other projects, or what? <laughs> I'll take this one. Thanks. Um, we actually uh, will issue like we did this evening, we will wait until we get the approval of the loan and we will issue it as a private placement um, to the Water Development Board, similar to what we did tonight. Probably. Okay, Probably. okay so, so, so we are going to issue the $3 million plus the uh, GOs plus the 1.1 .1 COs? That is currently our plan. If we get approved for the additional 1.1 million that we would um, either, we'll either, um, and we haven't quite figured out like, is that the best use of those funds or uh, if we have savings in other projects that we could apply toward that 1.1 million we, we're not guaranteed to get approved for that additional 1.1 million um, right now we're only yeah. we're we, only good on the three million for we, sure we, we we're increasing the application we, we are authorized for the three million dollars from the Texas Water development board but after we explain the situation with the inflation cost in construction materials and everything they recommended that we still apply for the four and a four point one million dollars. Oh, okay, so we're not actually going to go ahead and issue geo bonds for the three million. Not yet, no. Okay, got we it. We would we would be back in probably December, January. Yeah, um, okay. Whenever we get the final approval, then we'll come back. Um, we will have to, if we do issue the COs, we'll have to do another notice um, with the forty five day publication and all that. So um, it would be a little while before we do that. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. What have we when you look at the Texas Water Development Board loans that we've received now, and this is the, mm -hmm. this will be the third. Be the third one. What are the interest savings in total? Um, the first one Estimated. was uh, seven and almost eight million on the first one. Um, this one that you just approved tonight was fourteen million, and then the I estimated uh, about two point eight million on this one if we're approved for it. So seven, fourteen, twenty-one, so about, about twenty-four million, million, million dollars in interest savings. It's a savings to the taxpayer by by going through the water development. Yes. Pretty significant. Uh, Suzanne. Thank you. Well, you just asked the question I had, <laughs> so thank you for that. But I wanted to thank you. I've been working with Jesse as well. So thank you for finding alternative sources and also for moving this forward. I know we talked about two years from now, and you've moved it for at least two years ahead of time. So thank you. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve. I've got a motion by Watley. Do I have a Second. second. Yes, second by McCutcheon. You vote this time, please. It passes seven to zero. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jorge. Item number seven, municipal utility district bonds, 7A, consideration of an action on city of Sugarland resolution number 2236, a resolution of the city council of city of Sugarland, Texas, authorizing the issuance of Imperial Redevelopment District tax increment contract revenue bond series 2022 in the amount of 7,615,000 and tax increment contract revenue bonds taxable series 2022A in the amount of $2,845,000. Jennifer Brown, Director of Finance. Thank you, Mayor. So I'm gonna give you a little overview, um, little overview of the Imperial Redevelopment District. Um, just a little background. Um, the district was created um, in 2005 by the state legislature. The city then uh, consented to the district in 2007. Uh, the district is similar to a MUD, but it has broader powers because it is legislatively created. Um, there are 746 acres within the district. It is uh, entirely within the city limits, and there's no expiration date. So this district will exist into perpetuity. Um, the city approved a redevelopment agreement um, in 2007, and it has been amended several times, most recently in May of 2016, um, which is the third amendment um, that we will reference uh, here in just a bit. 
Um, the debt that the district issues, ish, the debt that the district is issuing, sorry, words, um, is not and will never be the city's obligation because this district cannot be dissolved by the city. Um, and you can ignore the words there. I, I actually, this is the updated map <laughs> from the district. Um, so I, I was hoping I could get a new one, but uh, this is actually the, the newest one that we have um, of the district. Uh, the outline is in pink. Um, there is uh, one piece, small piece up um, further north on Highway 6 um, uh, at Voss, um, where the, uh, uh, I think it's a 7-Eleven now. It used to be a raceway. I can't remember the, the name of the, the station there, but there's a little tract up there that's included as part of the district. Mm -hmm. Um, overall overview of Imperial, uh, this is, district was developed as a mixed use community and there are single family and multifamily residential units, retail and office components, um, and a commercial uh, contracts for commercial development. There is uh, the Imperial uh, Historic District track, which is um, uh, it's going to be a mixed use lifestyle center. Um, and it currently includes the Sugarland Heritage Museum and Visitor Center and the Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center. And this is also the home of our Constellation Field. The district has a uh, tax rate of $1.10, which is currently allocated 84 cents to debt service and 26 cents to maintenance and operations for 2021. And their 2022 uh, taxable assessed value is 425.66 million. The district currently has uh, 46.58 million out of 50.73 million in original par amount of uh, bonds between unlimited tax uh, road bonds and park bonds. This does not include TERS contract revenue bonds, um, which they have one outstanding issue of those. And, uh, okay, wait a minute. This is the wrong presentation, y'all, sorry. Let me skip over. They're very similar, but okay, that's why I was confused. Let me go through the right presentation and then I'll go back and, um, okay. Um, all right, so this is, talked about Imperial redevelopment. You have the third amendment. All right, let me give, there's the overview of the redevelopment district, taxable value and tax rate, the map of the district, okay. All right, so this is the timeline of the uh, creation of the TERS. Um, it was created by the city in um, 2007 um, by ordinance number 1667. The city's base value for this TERS is 5.6 million. In 2013, Fort Bend County agreed to participate in the TERS with their general fund only, not the drainage district. Their contractual base value is 11.76 million. And this TERS uh, currently expires in 2042. So we have Imperial Redevelopment District and the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Number Three. Um, the city contributed a total of ten million um, toward roadway roadway infrastructure within the TERS. It was seven million for roadway infrastructure and three million for offsite parking improvements for the baseball stadium. Um, the district agreed to reimburse the city um, for those costs plus four percent interest, as if the city had issued debt to finance, even though we paid cash from our economic development corporations. And so we didn't actually issue any debt, but we amortized the cost over 20 years and accrued interest um, from the time that we issued the debt until the third amendment, which was in 2016, which basically stopped the clock. And I'll show you the, those figures in just a moment. Um, with that, uh, that third amendment to the development agreement stopped the accrual of interest. So this is the split between the two um, corporations. We had uh, SLDC, um, paid 3.8 million and the 4B Corporation paid 3.2 million out of the 7 million for roadway infrastructure that served the entire development. And then the 4B Corporation put in another 3 million for the offsite parking uh, for the baseball stadium. So the total split was 3.8 million from the SLDC and 6.2 million from the 4B and that comes up with the total 10 million. The interest accrual through May of 2016 uh, for the 4A SLDC Corporation is uh, just under a million dollars. And for the 4B Corporation, it's 1.62 million, totaling 2.61 million. So the total amount that is owed to the city, which will go to the two corporations, 
um, is 12.61 million. And we do have those revenues budgeted in the corporation's budgets for fiscal year 23. So it would be 4.79 million to the Sugarland Development Corporation and 7.82 million to the Sugarland 4B Corporation. So the participation levels of the charters, so both the city and the county um, contribute 50% of the taxes that are collected on property within the zone to the TERS. Uh, the city also contributes an additional uh, contribution of half cent, one half cent out of the two cent total um, on sales taxes collected from within the Imperial Tract, which is the historic district. Right now that's only the visitor center and the children's discovery uh, museum. Um, but we do calculate those sales taxes and we contribute them. The tri-party agreement um, was came out of the third amendment that was approved in May of 2016. Um, it was uh, finalized um, in August of 2016. Um, and um, through that agreement, um, the TERS assigns an amount equal to um, every, uh, the TERS gets to keep 2% um, of the annual revenue that is received and everything else gets assigned to the redevelopment district. Sorry, that statement isn't very clear. So basically everything except for 2%, the, the TERS retains 2% for administrative costs. Um, the other 98% gets assigned to the district. And uh, we granted through that tri-party agreement the authority for the district to uh, issue uh, bonds against that TERS revenue stream. So those are the contract revenue bonds um, that you're here uh, considering um, this evening. So the third amendment also outlined that the district was responsible for 14.93 million of the uh, costs associated with University Boulevard North um, extension um, into the district from 90A. And uh, it locked in the reimbursement to the city at 12.6 million. Um, the third point is that uh, once the district hit 400 million in assessed value, that that reimbursement to the city must be included in their next bond issue. Um, and that's what they're here this evening to, to ask for approval for. Um, they may issue bonds both from ad valorem taxes or bonds secured from TERS revenues to satisfy that debt. So they are um, issuing contract revenue bonds that will be secured by the TERS revenues. Um, and they are splitting them between um, the series 2022, which is a tax exempt issue and the series 22A, which is a taxable issue. Um, and that was uh, at the, on the advice of their bond council because a portion of the baseball uh, stadium parking is, has some private use associated with it. So they wanted to make sure that they didn't run into any issues with that. Um, and so they're using, using both uh, the taxable bonds and reserves to fund that. So um, the total being paid to the city is 12.614 million. Um, the total bond issue requirement is 10.446 million. Um, and they're using about $3 million of cash on hand um, to, to make the difference after issuance costs. So the recommended action for this item is approval of res resolution uh, 2236, authorizing the issuance of 7,615,000 in tax increment and contract revenue bonds, series 2022, and 2,845,000 in tax increment contract revenue bonds taxable, series 2022A. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. And Jennifer, I think you have some people from the Imperial Redevelopment District. Yes, sir. You have former Mayor Thompson. I think he's yes. president of the board. And then you have Bond Council. Yes, and their financial a, advisor, Spencer Day, financial is in advisor. here. Right. So. Council, any questions to Jennifer and other IRD? Stuart. Thank you, Mayor. So, Jennifer, what, uh, what ratings are these uh, various issues going to uh, carry? Yeah. <laughs> and go ahead and identify yeah, yourself. Spencer Day with uh, Masterson Advisors, financial advisor for the district. Uh, we are going through the rating process with Moody's right now. Uh, the, the TERS bonds have not had a um, rating in the past, so this will be their first rating. We can't say for sure where that's going to land. Um, we're hoping it'll be in the BAA3 range. Okay. But we should get that rating back tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. 
Got a motion, we've got a second. Uh, you'll vote at this time, please. And it's approved unanimously. Thank you, Jennifer. Item number 7B, consideration of an action on City of Sugarland Resolution number 2237, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Sugarland, Texas, authorizing the issuance of Imperial Redevelopment District's Unlimited Tax Park Bonds, yeah. Series 2022A, in the amount of $6,225,000. Jennifer. All right. So since I've already started on this presentation, I'm going to make this one fairly short. I do apologize. These two got confused in the, in the, the sorting. So um, all the same information. Um, the only thing you don't have in this uh, in the mix here is the TERS revenues. Um, so we have our um, overview of the development, same tax rate, same tax base. Um, this is the outstanding debt outside of the TERS contract revenue bonds. So uh, 46.58 million is what's currently outstanding out of uh, eight previous issues um, that were originally 50.735 million. This series um, is park bonds, and it is going to reimburse the developer for parks infrastructure for the areas listed here. Um, and again, these are uh, facilities that would never become city facilities. We have no concerns with uh, reimbursement for um, any of these items. Um, the district is planning to sell um, August later in August, I think around the 25th. Um, and uh, so staff has reviewed this proposed issuance. Um, it does comply with our uh, resolution 11-07. Um, it is extending the maturity schedule of the district by one year, um, but that is consistent with what we have been doing with this district since um, the development has had a gap and then has, has been a little slower than originally anticipated. Um, and so we have, as they've come each year, have allowed them to extend that maturity schedule by one year. Um, it is also consistent with the third amendment to the redevelopment agreement. With that, um, staff recommends approval of resolution uh, number 2237, authorizing the issuance of 6225000 in Imperial Redevelopment District Unlimited Tax Park Bond Series 2022. Any questions? Motion to approve. We've got a motion by Wiley. Do I have a second? Second, second Mama Cutson. You vote at this time, please. And it passed seven to zero. Thank you, Jennifer. This time we're going to move to item number eight, City Council City Manager Reports, 8A, City Council Member Reports. Suzanne, let's start with you. I knew you are going to do that. I'm not ready. But I will say that uh, we attended a Sunday night uh, Smart Financial Center with Methodist, and we saw Rick Springfield, and yes, he did take off his shirt. With that, I'll pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, let's go straight to you. Well, I thought you would cover the Sugarland Firefighters Ball pre-sponsor party at the Golf Home. That was a really great event, and we're really excited about the Firefighters Gala coming up next month. And I attended the Fort Bend County Lid 2 workshop, which was not nearly as exciting as that. And then Councilmember Kermali and I attended the Indian American PAC elected officials reception at India House. The shot. Thought you weren't going to call on me today, Mayor. Um, Mayor, you and I. It's his uh, birthday. His birthday is coming up. Thursday. 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 How old will you be? 28. 51, 51 big campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mary, you and I uh, last Thursday attended uh, in Houston uh, the preview of the Smiley Center Houston, uh, where we had the opportunity to meet His Highness Prince Amin. Um, Aga Khan was there, and uh, it was just a very, very nice uh, building that's coming in, in the city of Houston on Allen Parkway in Montrose, and uh, there was a lot of Congress uh, men there and women. Uh, Mayor Houston, uh, Mayor Turner was there and several other dignitaries, but uh, it was a very nice event. And uh, several of us also attended the museum Mix and Mingle uh, last week in District 2. So all of y'all came to my district, uh, the best district there is, for a very, very nice uh, opening night of a new Egyptian-themed um, e exhibit. Stuart, let's go to you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
all of us, except for William, who was in Kentucky uh, helping victims of the flood, attended that um, that museum event. And I have to say that the mayor did not take off his shirt, though. <laughs> cooler heads. Prevailed. Thank goodness. Cooler, cooler heads prevailed. Um, I had the pleasure, though, of hosting uh, uh, Calusa Engineering, which is owned by uh, uh, Lawrence and Cynthia Turner. They purchased the city suite uh, at the Ark of Fort Bend uh, annual um, Western dance, uh, and the money went directly into uh, a charitable cause for um, helping people with uh, intellectual disabilities. So that was a very, uh, that was a very pleasant uh, opportunity. Thank you. Jennifer. Um, Mayor and I attended the Texas Municipal League Region 14 uh, meeting in Galveston over the weekend. Uh, we had a few state reps uh, that came and talked about the legislative priorities, a, a lot of talk about uh, school funding and uh, reinforcements to the uh, Gulf Coast to protect that from storm surge. And we also had the interim CEO of um, ERCOT, Brad Jones, came and gave a presentation to us. So it was very informative. Well, Mayor, um, I, in private, have told you guys how much I appreciate this team and how much I appreciate uh, how our city plans and the last five days I spent in traveling to and from Kentucky and I realized while I was there watching so many people suffer um, I realized how great this city was once again and all that we do to prepare for the worst moments that they're living through now after a 1,000 year flood so uh, I got back late last night, nearly midnight, and I was grateful the entire 17 and a half hour drive back and uh, for this great city. So keep up the great work. Thank you, William. Uh, I will tell you that uh, the Houston Galveston Area Council uh, this morning convened uh, and the board of directors of which I'm a part. Uh, we approved the $489 million method of distribution, which is a distribution from the GLO, from the federal government, uh, to distribute those Hurricane Harvey funds. Uh, the city of Sugarland and Fort Bend County are gonna take advantage of that. We've applied for our portion of those funds. It will now go back to the GLO for final approval, and then those funds will be distributed. So we expect very quick action. It wasn't without, uh, without disagreement from Harris County and the city of Houston, but we got through it and we're proud that uh, we we pushed that through. There was a there was a motion to remand it back to the Water Resources Committee, on which I also sit. Uh, that was denied. It failed. So I'm glad that we pushed that through. It's about time we got those Hurricane Harvey funds distributed to the regions and the counties and the cities that that are very much needed. Item number B eight uh, City Manager report. Mike. No report, Mayor. This time on item number nine, we're going to going to go into closed executive session. Closed executive session is authorized by Chapter 551 Texas Government Code in accordance with Section 551074 Personnel Matters. And we're gonna, going to adjourn into the council dining room. Recording stopped. Okay. Pretty, pretty emotional assistant. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. But. You know, it looked like he was there. Yeah. Yeah.